Hey there kids, welcome back. David from Atomic Candy and right now I am open by chance and what I'm opening up with for you here today is finally the one-sixth scale He-Man from Masters of the Universe. Mondo had been teasing people at conventions with this for a couple of years. New York Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con and they'd show these figures but they weren't producing them. Well, finally they are. And He-Man is the first one in the series. And as you saw in the box here, this is actually the exclusive edition, not the regular edition. And this has already been opened up at the top. I've already split that open. And you see there's a dent here. And unfortunately, that dent follows all the way through because you just can never rely on shipping. This was delivered Federal Express, actually. So, Federal Express is responsible for damaging my He-Man. Well, they damage the box anyways, which I'll show you here in a moment. There's the back of the box. A nice Filmation Castle Grayskull look to it. And as we come around, you can see now that dent in the upper left-hand corner of the box. It just goes all the way through. This is a sleeve, the door of Castle Grayskull. We'll go ahead and pull that off. And there's He-Man. Masters of the Universe He-Man, and there's the sticker from Mondo to verify that it is the exclusive edition. This is no longer available from Mondo. The exclusive is no longer available. The regular edition is and you can also get the regular edition on Sideshow. And there's a fully painted version of the art from the front. When Mondo does an exclusive on these, the window is typically about 30 days. And it's only a $5 difference. So from my perspective, I was like, yeah, you know, I'll pay an extra 5 bucks for the exclusive. Why not? 1-6 scale He-Man. And it's a flap held with magnets. Description on the inside and then the He-Man figure. And we will be opening this up here so that we can take a good look at him, test his articulation and all that good stuff. Cannot be opened from the bottom, but we can open it from the top. And this one has a flap for opening. If I can get into it without bending anything. My box is already damaged. I like the boxes to be intact. And there's a series of trays inside. And it was red and you couldn't even tell it was red because it was so dark inside that packaging. Go ahead and get He-Man out of there. The next one in the series is Skeletor. So you get He-Man now, Skeletor will be next, and then I believe they're going to do Merman, Faker, and then now they've announced the Man-at-Arms is coming. There's the bottom tray with all of the weapons and accessories and the stand. Everything is in here. An axe. The power sword, a regular sword, a blaster pistol, a blaster rifle, a shield, part of the stand, the sheath, all in here. And we'll be taking this all out and laying it out so you can get a better look at it. This is taped on the sides. And here's our He-Man with the accessories. And the skull there is actually the bonus feature for the exclusive. And it goes with, of course, the next figure in the series. You get two heads. That being Skeletor, which should be coming out soon. So let's go ahead and get him out of there and stand him up and get a better look at him.
And here we are back with Armando 1-6 scale exclusive He-Man from the Masters of the Universe out of the box and on the stand. And there you see the portrait that they gave him. The artist rendition head. He has another head, which you'll see here in a moment. Very thick body. Very thick, heavy action figure, actually. The whole package was heavy. Mixed media. See the furry boots there. They are actually simulated fur. And a loincloth. They chose to give him a loincloth instead of the fur underwear that you usually see him with in the filmation. Usually it's LPH that wants all the Masters of the Universe stuff. LPH, of course, is my wife, and you see her on this channel. We do the weekly roundup show together. She loves Masters of the Universe. She has a lot of Masters of the Universe figures from various years, including the originals. And these came out from Mondo, and Masters has never really been done in 1-6 scale before. And she said, no, I don't really want those. And I was shocked. I was like, no, really? You're kidding. But since she didn't get them, I did. I was like, yeah, I'll go ahead and get uh, six scale Masters. Why not? Because I have nothing else for Masters of the Universe. She's got all of it. <laughs> Super 7 and Maddie Collector Club and 200X and original Mattel. She collects all of that stuff. So I guess I'll just do the Mondo. That's fine. He-Man, who was originally supposed to be Conan, I guess. Mattel was approached for licensing for doing toys for the Conan film, which there never were any. They never did make Conan action figures for the movie, per se. There was a Conan cartoon in the 90s that they made figures for, but that's something else. So in 1980, they came and said, hey, would you make action figures? And Mattel said, sure. Then Mattel saw the film. <laughs> well, they were granted the rights in 1981 to do the figures, but then when they saw it, take a look at some of the accessories here. He's got a blaster rifle very filmation looking blaster rifle here and it's cool that they give you a lot of options he doesn't just have the power sword he's got stuff like this that he might have used in the comic or in filmation a blaster pistol but anyway they saw all the violence and nudity and sexuality in the film and were like ah uh, no we probably shouldn't be doing this because back in the day back in the 80s they didn't make an action figure of just any old thing like they do now. And so in 1982, January of 1982, they backed out. They said, hey, we don't want to do this. Now here's the extra head. And this head is very much like the classic, classic Mattel head. It's like a perfect rendition of the classic Mattel, Mattel head. And I don't really care for this one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'll be using this one, but we'll take a look at it anyway. So they backed out in like January of 1982. They said, no, we need to get out of this. And then in February of 1983, released He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Which is one of their greatest licenses. This is the insert, an exclusive insert for the Skeletor, which is due next. I like how the mouth is hinged. And this looks like the comic book version of his face. And obviously, the hood probably doesn't come off and you insert face plates rather than changing the head out. I don't really care for face plates, but we'll see how Skeletor looks when he comes up. Battle Axe. The Power Sword. The Grey Skull Power Sword. The unique looking version of the sword. It does not look like the classic Mattel sword at all, or the Filmation sword. Although it would have been nice if they included one, because they did give him a classic Mattel head. The sheath for the sword, with clips for the harness on his back. And, of course, that does 
fit in there nice and clean. No problem. A very thick, heavy shield. This is solid. And that is the extra handle for the shield. And it is big enough that he can actually get his arm in there and flexible. You see that? One of the problems I've had with shields with Captain America with Hot Toys is very often his arm won't fit in there. So it's nice that that is big enough that he can actually get it on. A short sword, very standard short sword. And then Burby, who has his own stand. And you notice he's not standing up. And the reason he's not standing up is because it's very top heavy and awkward and I did not want it to fall over. You see how it just kind of wobbles? One end of this figure is heavier than the other. The Burby itself, the, uh, the back end is actually kind of heavier than the front end. And this is kind of a flimsy stand. It's very thin. I don't want this to topple over and have something break. So I just kind of, just kind of laid him down there. And you saw him in the first episode he ate some Eternium and got really sick while He-Man was fighting with Trapjaw, if I remember my episodes correctly. I could be wrong, but I think I'm right. And two extra sets of hands. Gripping hands for holding swords. And what's interesting is the palms of his hands, they look kind of dirty. It could be just from the machining of the figure and they're very basic, they're not, I mean, they're detailed, but they're not like super well detailed. Like I do some Mezco unboxings and I've got figures that like, you can see every line and vein and everything in the hand and it's even colored. And these are just kind of basic. And then we get two other hands and these of course are, since he comes with guns, trigger finger hands, yeah. Shooting He-Man. I think I'll be posing him with the rifles. So let's go ahead and pull him off of there and take a look at his articulation overall. And you see the stand is like the basic kind of ball hugger stand that goes up between the figure's legs. I really don't like those. You know, that's neither here nor there because some people kind of like those. I don't because I find that it doesn't really hold the figures up very well. So, here is our Prince Adam. Oh, did I give away his identity? I'm so sorry. Um, very tight around the neck. It doesn't tilt too much side to side. A little bit. A little bit of tilt. Forward and back a little bit. Side to side works really well. Shoulders, nice and loose. They open way up, so you can get a lot going on here with the shoulders. That's good. See, like that, all the way around. Goodness, bicep is very tight, doesn't want to bend. This one either, very tight on the bicep. And that's about as far as it's going to go. You got a good bicep pivot, you got two points of pivoting actually, but not very much in the way of bend. Gauntlets are um, separate pieces. Rotation is at the wrist. There is some measure of restriction on the hands because of the gauntlets, but it's not too bad. Let's go ahead and try to change a hand out real quick. That came out really easily. There's a letter R inside there. Do you see it? I guess so when they were assembling it, they wouldn't make any mistakes, right? Oh, and that comes off. So you can do without the gauntlet if you want. That's good to know. Let's see if, how hard that is to get in there. Not too bad. Not too bad changing the handout. There's a, a bend in the chest, which is very obvious back here. This doesn't look very good, actually. I don't like the way that looks on the back, but, I mean, it's tolerable. It's still limited forward and backward, but it does move. 
side to side pivot limited twisting at the chest rather than at the waist although the waist does turn so you have that option all right splits not too bad it is really wide open down there there's his fur underwear in case you were wondering forward and backward leg not too bad you can get a good stride out of him and the knee double jointed at the knee a little stiff like the arms but oh, the right knee seems to work better than the left one the left one the second joint doesn't want to turn and looking inside there you can see some plastic residue right inside you see that I'm trying to show you here on his left there's a little bit of plastic residue which I think is blocking the first joint from bending also you notice it's moving slightly to the side where this one is straight up and down so this one may not have been assembled properly there might be a little bit of, of a problem with how this one was constructed I'm not gonna force it too much I don't want to damage it something to consider in the manufacturing process I don't know if anyone else is having a problem with this one if you have this figure let me know in the comment section if you had a problem with any of the uh, any of the jointing. I wonder if it's the same problem inside the elbow on this one. Can't see that far in to tell. All right. I've seen worse on articulation from much more expensive figures. I've had Hot Toys figures where the articulation was just terrible. Side to side at the knee for the calves and then ankle articulation is okay <laughs> goes way out there side to, look at the way they get this jointed hold on look at that what an odd way to joint this I mean you can get a lot of movement out of it but it just doesn't look right and it looks like uh, he stepped in a hole and broke his ankle. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, I guess next thing we can do is try to pop his head off and put on the other head and see how that looks. Didn't come off with too much difficulty. We'll put the... And that popped in rather easily. And there is your classic Mattel looking head. Which... I always thought that face kind of looked like an ape. I don't know. It could be just me. If you really need that head, it's there. I don't care for that head on this figure. It's nice to have the option, though. Like I said, I think I prefer the other portrait. There we go. Not any problem doing that. So let's just pose him up a little bit and see how he looks. Freeze, all of you. Choice, really choice. What is this, a circus act? Now somebody's going to give me some answers around here. Let's start with you, Blondie. And here we are back with our Mondo, Masters of the Universe, He-Man 1 6th scale figure. Posed up a little bit. Sort of a classic museum pose. Got him standing with his rifle and pistol blasters. Sort of gray skull on his back. Power sword. I would have liked to have posed him a little bit better, but he is a very stiff figure and he's very thick. So posing's kind of difficult with this figure, unfortunately. But overall, I do like the look of the figure, despite the articulation problems. And again, you know, rarely is a figure this size made for masses of the universe. Now, Mattel did do in the Maddie Collector Club the jumbo-sized ones that were made to look exactly like the original 
five inch figures, but in a one six scale format. And I do like those. They come carded like the original figures. But I like this one as well. I think Mondo did a good job overall. Again, some limitations to the articulation, probably due to the fact that the figure was made to be so physically muscular. So that does take away from some of the articulation that is to be expected. No problem putting the guns or any other weapons in his hands. His hands are very rubbery. So no problem putting weapons in. Of course you saw no trouble changing out hands or the head. Overall I do like the look of the figure. I'm anticipating the Skeletor coming out. I think the the way they articulated the feet's pretty wonky though, to be honest. And I'm a little bit concerned about the knee. But like I said, I'm not going to force it. I think there is a defect in the knee with the way that one was constructed. And I'm curious to see if anyone else has had any problems with it. Quality control, guys. This is a long-anticipated figure, as I pointed out. Mondo had been showing He-Man, Skeletor, Merman, and Faker at shows for a couple of years. And everybody's like, when is this going to happen? Well, it's finally happening. And although you can't get the exclusive version, which again, with the exclusive, all you get is the extra Skeletor head for the next figure. But you can still get the regular figure both from Mondo and from Sideshow. They are available. So what do you think of the 1-6 scale He-Man, Prince Adam and He-Man form? Do you think they did a good job on it? Is this a figure that you would want? I think the retail is about 160 on the on the standard edition. And again, it was 165 for the exclusive. So if another figure comes up like Merman or um, when the Faker comes out or Man at Arms, if there's an exclusive version, I recommend just going straight to Mondo and buying the exclusive for an extra five bucks for the extra piece. I think it's worth it personally. Let me know what you think about He-Man in the comment section down below. Do you have this figure? Are you anticipating getting this figure? Is it one that you would want? Are you a Masters fan? Let me know in the comments section down below. I'd like to hear about it. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. I hope you did. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. Check out some of our other videos. I do other unboxings. I do 1-6 scale unboxings and Mezco 12th scales. I do a lot of those. I showcase vintage toys because I am a vintage collector. Comic books. We do a weekly roundup, we do toy hunts, we do sh toy shows, all sorts of things on this channel. Check us out, you might find something you like. Find us on Instagram, open by chance on Instagram. And we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Come on, friends. Let's go home.